We're all very concerned uh, about the rising number of COVID-19 infections and the number of hospitalizations that are occurring. And even more, we're well, worried about this new variant of the virus which is emerging, which seems to be very easily transmissible, though thankfully not more virulent. And in that concern, we pray particularly for our fantastic NHS and we give them our love and support for the immense strains and stresses that they're enduring at this time. In this third lockdown that we're going into, what is different from the first lockdown is that in the first lockdown, the government just decided unilaterally and appropriately to shut all church buildings across England. But this time, it has decided that they can remain open for personal prayer, but also for public worship. And the reason the government has decided that, because it was quite clear that the number of COVID-19 infections that arose from places of public worship were minuscule. They were a tiny fraction of the thousands that have happened. Which is why I want to pay warm tribute to our clergy, our readers, our lay leaders, our church wardens, because we've worked fantastically hard to ensure that our churches are as safe as they can be. And I think what the government has also recognised is just how important our church buildings are, so that in the life of a community, people can just come to them and be still and lay their burdens before God and be refreshed. So if at all possible, in this current difficulty, we need to keep our churches open so that people can come and pray. But these decisions are really difficult and actually they're going to have to be locally taken, whether you're going to keep a church open, whether you're going to lock them, whether you're going to have worship all done online, whatever combination of things is appropriate for your circumstances. And whatever decision you make, I and my colleagues want to support you absolutely. I recognise just how complex this is. One of the things about this lockdown is the fact that I don't know how long it will take, but it could be weeks, it could be months. And so, as well as being super cautious, we also need to be resilient, which is why we need to be looking out for one another. Because there are plenty of issues, and particularly amongst younger people, as well as those who live by themselves, to do with the fragility of our mental health. The government can do many things, but what the government cannot legislate for is generosity, for kindness, for trust, for friendship. Those are things you can't buy in the shops either. They're things that we discover, they're things that we share, they're things that we build together because it's the stuff that it glues communities together. And at our best, that's what Christian people are all about. We've got a lot to do and to contribute to the life of our communities here in Devon at this critical time. So as we begin this lockdown, I pray for you and with you, for our people of Devon and our country, that God may protect us and that we may make wise decisions. And so I share with you the prayer that was written when this pandemic first hit our country. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy in this time of uncertainty and distress. Sustain and support the anxious and fearful and lift up all who are brought low, that we may rejoice in your comfort knowing that nothing can separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Do all that you can to remain safe. And what you can't do, trust to God. <laughs>